this was that you're talking about? This was like 84. No, it was like 83. 83, 84, something like that. December 83. I would have been 19 or 20. I was 16. Yeah. And six months later, I was in the band. You just worked right away or? Yeah, pretty much. We figured... We, started, we figured that if he was a good, good heavy metal drummer, he'd be able to figure out what we were doing. We started playing in August of '84 and played our. I started practicing then, and I started learning their set. And we played our first show in September. Yeah, I had started writing stuff that was pretty outside the box at that point. Um, earlier, our earlier stuff was more by the numbers, hardcore, kind of. Sort of, but it was still good. Of, it was, it was still know? weird, you know. I always had a uh, was interested in melody, you know, with songs. You know? Is this when the band was called The Nerve? No, 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 no. It was never really, that was never really. Okay. Only for about a minute, I think. It was called The Nerve. Yeah. And they were called The Melvins right away. You know, yeah, I'd, right I'd away. seen them at that, at that show, or the radio show. And then a few months later in like April or May, they played a show in Aberdeen with this band, Metal Church, from Aberdeen. Yeah. I mean, I started playing guitar when I was about 18. So we're talking like two, not even two years. Yeah. You know, it seemed like a, lot, a long time then. But it was really band oriented immediately. I didn't spend time in cover bands or play other people's music. Not really. I mean, we did. That was just in the formative years of us doing things in practice places, essentially. You know, or a, a gra you know, like somebody's parents' garage or whatever. Just learning how to play the instruments and playing with other band people. The first thing you do is play songs that you know. You know. Well, I realized right away, especially after getting involved in punk rock, that there was that was going nowhere. You know, we could still do cover songs, but I knew we had to start writing music. That was it. That's what I did. Yeah, nobody else thought that way around Aberdeen, no way. Oh, no way. They still don't. No. I was like, no, we need to learn this set of songs to play the high school dance. You know, that was the, yeah. the kind of band I was in. I was like, you know, we've got to play this Eddie Money song, you know. We've, Lover Boy. Yeah. The Kid is Hot Maybe a couple tonight. Zeppelin songs. Yeah. You know? Maybe. I mean, if we're, you know. Yeah, maybe. If we're lucky, you know, I could talk them into playing like yeah. a Judas Priest song or something like that. Yeah. And what was high <laughs> school like for you guys? Horrible. Um, if I had to do it over, I'd quit. <laughs> I would quit the second I was able to. You know? Yeah, I wasn't interested in anything besides playing Massive music. Massive wasted time. Huh? What was that? I wasn't interested in anything besides playing music. You know, nothing. Yeah. I mean, I graduated, made it through, but... Um, I quit. I did I, the smart thing. I yeah. Quit. I think everybody except me and the Melvins quit. Yep. Yeah. Kurt, and, and like with Nirvana, I think Nova Solich graduated, but Dave Grohl quit. Uh, Kurt certainly quit. Oh, Kurt was gone. Yeah, he was gone early on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I always say. If you want to... Make be a success in music. You have to quit high school. He was. He That's was the first uh, thing you have to do. He quit like by the time he was sixteen, seventeen. Right? Yeah. That's great. Quitting advice. high school. Yeah. I tell lots of kids this. I can't level. tell you how many how many millionaires have made it in music it's and do not have yeah. a high school diploma by any means. You know, it stood in their way somehow. You know, it didn't do me a bit of good. You know, I don't stand up for the American education system. I don't stand up for any of those things. I think it's a total waste of time. You know. I mean, if we hate the government, which, you know, I mean, if people, certainly in punk rock, hate the government, why would you want that same government educating you or your children? That doesn't make any sense to me. You know, you think that you, you would want to be in charge of that. Somehow that all gets mixed up along the way. And I think it's a, a, a massive black hole where nothing comes out of it. Mass, millions and billions of dollars go in and shit comes out of it on the other end. Right. You know, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. It's just to get the kids out of the house. I get guess, but why should we pay for babysitting, house. you know? Yeah. I don't, first off, I don't give a fucking <laughs> shit about you or your kids. And I certainly don't feel like I owe your kids an education, you know? <laughs> I don't owe you fucking shit, nothing. That's your job as a parent. You need to do these things, and that's where the problems arise. You're going to send your kids off to these kinds of situations and let them get uh, educated by people who are fools, you know? Dumbasses educating the children of dumbasses. You know, I'm not interested in it. It makes no sense to me, and I did. It didn't work for me. And what I realized was, when I got out of there, and and, and became involved in underground, that, that that the world was a much bigger place than I'd ever been led to believe. Like I said, and 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 that's how all this stuff works. You know. So then, when you see bands like Carp or something like that, that's, that doesn't happen very often. You know. And so then you you feel some sort of. Uh, 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 connection, I guess. And so then enough of a connection to where it, it made an impact on us to the point where we thought maybe Jared would be somebody that we would want to play with eventually. Right. That all started with Carp, certainly, you know, by, 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 by all means, you know. Um, you know, if, it, 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 it's not the kind of thing that would have came up with. It's like, well, you know, that guy from Limp Biscuit was a pretty good bass player. I mean, those aren't the conversations we had yeah, when, we're, when we started thinking about it. And we don't have tryouts for our band, you know. 
I'm not interested in trying people out. I have no interest in the in the L.A. or New York scene of people who are really good, you know, yeah. that play with every other band. I have no interest in any of that stuff. I want something that's more special, more more intimate, that that means more to me, you know. What is that? It's some. It, it's it's not something you can get at Guitar Center, you know. It's not something you can learn in Guitar Player Magazine. You have to have that education from the beginning, you know. Or you have to be a situation where you're young enough, like Dale, that he was willing to be educated. But in hindsight, now I realize that 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 was actually there's not a whole lot of people that that would have worked with. Not a whole lot of people would be willing to sacrifice their entire lives and move away from their families and their friends and, and just take off before they were 21 years old, you know, and just be done with all that stuff. Me and him were finished with that area. We were finished. We'd had it. We had nothing. There was nothing for us there. There was nothing to go home to. And we were willing to just get the hell out of there and start over, you know. And that, 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 there's not, not, not that many people that are willing to do those sorts of things, literally with pennies in your pocket. You know, and just getting getting out. But when you have nothing, you have nothing to lose. You know. How would you guys describe your friendship together? With uh, ours, ours. Um, Dale's the kind of guy that if I gave him ten thousand dollars, I wouldn't have to count it when I got it back. <laughs> yeah. No, what was the other one? Uh, uh, trust, uh, and trust and understanding. Trust and understanding. I don't trust him, and he doesn't understand me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's good. <laughs> we stole that from somebody else. I don't remember who. But we steal everything. Uh, we steal everything. Yeah. Somebody ripped off the thing I ripped off. Somebody ripped off the shit caught. I ripped off. That's right. Um, uh, but, you know, I mean, we get along good. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it works musically, you know. But I'm not an easy person to get along with. I know this. Ask my wife. She'll tell you, <laughs> you know. I'm a fucking weirdo. And, 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 and I'm not Mr. Rogers, you know. I'm not Mr. Rogers, believe it or not. You know, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm crazy and, and weird and hard to deal with. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's, I understand those kinds of things. So I, I, try to, I try to make the times between when I have to make an apology longer and longer. <laughs> That's my goal. That's a noble pursuit. So, so you're saying that, like, Dale can deal with you more or less? Yeah, he can deal yeah, with me. I just turn it off. You turn yeah. it off. He yeah. talks and talks, and I'm just like, mm-hmm. My mm -hmm. wife says I have ten conversations going in my head at all times. And it never stops. The best thing to do is just agree with everything. Yep, yeah. Okay, yeah. Sure, okay. So he'll change, far, he'll so change his mind anyway. Yeah. You know? Or he'll forget about it anyway. And so this yeah. might be a little redundant, but, but what about your guys' relationship do you think has been able to enable you guys to keep going and keep, you know, traverse difficulties and keep going for all this period of time, which now has been a while? 25 <laughs> plus years. Yeah. It's what all, has made that, that work? Mm -hmm. It's all driven by money. Yeah, it's money, uh, yeah. Um, money, we're money driven what we're to haul it. Um <laughs> we can't do anything else at this point, so we gotta keep going. <laughs> I uh uh um uh, I, I, I think that um I still have an artistic vision for what I'm doing, you know? And I think it still works. Yeah, it's still fun. You know, and we make a living. It's still doing challenging, what we're doing, yeah. You know? Musically challenging, everything. You know? That's what I do. And that's what I wanna do. And that's what I decided I wanted to do a long time ago. The second we were able to make ends meet, even by the most minute ability, that was what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, I don't do real well in a working situation, believe it or not. Taking orders from somebody, you know. All I can think about is how much I want to poison them. <laughs> you know. So you guys are just saying you guys have the same focus or goals or aims? Is that what you're saying? Or what are you, you know what I mean? Together. I understand what... I don't understand, but I would assume that there's something unequivocally that drives you separately. Well, I think he believes in, in, because in, in I write 90, 99% of the music, I think he believes in what I'm doing. Oh, yeah, you know? absolutely. Likes it, understands it, you know. Yeah. If I, I work really I hard. If I didn't, I'd be out of here a long time ago. Yeah, so yeah. I'll step around. It's a lot of hard work, but it's easier than any job that I ever had, any soul-sucking nightmare job that I wanted to kill everybody at, you know. Right. Which I never had a good job. I wasn't one of those no, people that no. had a good we job. We worked at pizza places. Yeah. Those were our last jobs in the in the nineties, early nineties. Yeah, you know. But that's how that it works. It. I mean, that's nothing new. I mean, there's there's all kinds of people yeah. that are unhappy with their jobs. You know, so what? That makes ten of us, you know. I don't imagine that somebody like Jared was would was really good at those kinds of things either. You know? I can't imagine that they, Probably would, they not. would fit I mean, we, we know the kind of jobs he's had. You know, same, same as us. Yeah. You know, actually, he's had better jobs than we did. Probably. Actually, you know. Maybe, probably even harder jobs. I know that one of his jobs was sounded like a, a, a real drag. 
Yeah. Like taking care of uh, 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 sex offenders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did that with Chris actually yeah. for a while. Um, what do you guys think your lives would have been like if you hadn't met each other, or, and or if you had lost one or the other? Oh God, I'd know. still be making music one way or another. Yeah, I'm sure I would too. Um, no doubt about you know, it. That, that, before I joined the band, that was what I wanted to do, you know, for sure. You know, we got to the point with uh, when everything exploded with the whole Nirvana thing that we accomplished all of our original goals relatively quickly, you know, which was playing a show. And then, you know, I wanted to like to play a show. It'd be great. And then maybe make a record, you know, yeah. at some point. And we passed passed all those a long, long time ago. And then when, when things are getting signed to big labels and and uh, uh, watching people that you had influenced sell millions and millions and millions of records worldwide and the giant, uh, that's just not something you can really plan for, you know? And what's happened is, is that, which is basically what I figured would happen from the beginning, is that all those things are left aside, you know? And you have to move on. I'm not bitter. I just tell it how it is. Which know? most people don't want to really know how it is, or don't yeah. believe you. They don't want to hear it, you know? What was going on in your guys' heads when uh, you heard that Car broke up, if you, guys, if you remember that? I didn't, really, I didn't really no. know about it. Okay. No, I had no idea. Um, let me ask you a different question. Well, uh, same thing with when um, Scott had his accident. You guys are already knew him and were friends. Yeah. At that point, yeah. Right? yeah. So you mean when was, he died? Yeah. What did we think? Well, yeah. I mean, what was it like for you? What were you, you know, what was going through your head? What were you thinking about it, if anything? Um, well, I thought it was, uh, you know, a bummer. It wasn't like a, uh, uh, yeah. you know, it wasn't like a overdose on drugs or anything like that. You know, it was like an accident. So. Real accident. Yeah, I know my wife was really upset by it because she was, um, well, you know, she was better friends with him than I was, you know, but she was very, really upset about the whole thing. That's one. Um, a friend of mine told me that I think I can't remember exactly how he had put it, but he was uh, um, good friends with them when this happened in Seattle. I think he was actually was supposed to go with them on that. Was oh, this right. uh, Kevin Willis? Kevin Willis, yeah. And he said that he uh, thought it was too dangerous. Yeah. You know, and 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 you know, it's kind of like one of those things. And this isn't exactly what it is, but what it reminds me of is like you know, I was late to get on my plane and the plane crashed. Right. You know, and, and yeah. you have this like, why, 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 did, why me type of thing. You know, and um, that was pretty heavy. I mean, the thing is, it's like. I've never had anything like that happen, you know. Nobody that close, you know, like a, a, a um, the way the way it's been with Jared, you know. Yeah. I mean, I've never talked had that conversation with Jared. I'm not. I'm not going to, you know. I'm not going to bring it up. It's just that's a little too heavy, you know. I mean, I have no interest in going there. That kind of thing. It's it's it's, it's horrible and tragic, and there's no good side to any of it. Yeah. You know. You know, I'm glad that he's still playing music and is kind of got beyond that, you know. So we've uh, actually talked about doing um, a carp cover at some point. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully we do. Yeah. But we probably would have done that whether he died or not, you know? Yeah, I think <laughs> so. But, you I, but, you know, I, he, I think, uh, you know, like I said, I think he's gotten beyond it, and I think he's willing to do something like that, you know? And we asked. Yeah, he said he would. I would love to do that. So we, we, that would be really good. Something we got to figure out something. Yeah, definitely. What do you guys think it's been, you know, you're kind of poking around it now, but, we'll, you know, been like for him to kind of like you know first he loses uh you know one childhood friend he played music with uh through you know drugs and pitfalls such as that and then fate another time you know to kind of have two pretty serious slaps in the face as far as you know emotionally and what he was doing what was the first one with, well, with, uh, with chris, chris I mean, yeah chris you know he did uh, die no but i'm, well, oh, well, but I'm I assuming mean, that he was, I mean, kind of his his, troubles, he was kind of the reason for a decade his troubles yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and it's still really yeah. Well, that, those are the things that happen with people that do that. You know, you you, you play around with things, things like that. There's a high price to pay. I'm never surprised when people's lives get destroyed by drugs and alcohol. Never. Especially in the music business. You know? <laughs> That's how it works. But what do you think uh, for Jared? Like to you know, what do you think about when you see or you know, what's your impression of him having to you know continue on? And, I think that's what you got to do. You know? I mean, he's talked about that the situation of a guitar player a little bit, and it's always only been in tragic terms, you know. Right. Yeah. 
It's never been. Which you know, we've gone through the same thing with a bunch yeah. of different bass players. So you know, can yeah. certainly certainly relate to the whole thing. Bass players, other people that we've known in our lives. You know, the the, the list of casualties, drugs and alcohol is huge. The difference between us and them, and them is that we would just get rid of that person and get somebody else. You know. Yeah. So, is there? I mean, other <coughs> than family. Well, let me just. So, what is your guys? Our main, our main focus as far as the band goes? Yeah, like when you walk out into the world and there's all these options. There's, there's, you know, what you like to do, there's music, there's careers, there's drugs, there's school, there's all this stuff. Where's, what's your hierarchy for you guys? I want to be a weirdo adult. <laughs> there you go. You know? That's I want to be a law-abiding citizen weirdo adult, you know, who doesn't have trouble with the cops, who doesn't have trouble with drugs or alcohol, certainly isn't under the lash of any of that stuff. I don't want to be involved in those types of things. I don't want to... I, I'm a groucho Marxist, <laughs> you know? That's I good. don't want to be involved in anything that would have me as a member, you know? Nothing. I don't go to Hollywood parties, I don't go to openings or any of that kind of stuff. Never, ever. I have no interest. I don't even like going to restaurants where hipsters are working. <laughs> it bothers me. You know? And why is that? Um, because I don't feel like I'm a part of any of that stuff, you know? I don't feel akin to any of it. I mean, uh, like, you know, the, the kind of thing, the, the hanging out aspects of all that kind of stuff. I do what I do, and in order for me to keep my head together, I have to have separation from uh, a lot of the key elements uh, that a lot of people think are cool, you know, whatever it may be, whether it's going to a bar. I don't drink. That's out. Not because I think I'm going to drink. It's because I don't like people who go to bars. I don't like being around drunks. I'm around them all the time. When I'm home, I don't want to have be involved in those sorts of things, you know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're in a bar every night when we're on tour, so. <laughs> Certainly don't hang out at too many of them when I'm home. Sometimes, <laughs> but not too often. So, so Usually I'm doing something at it, like DJing or something like that. So what do you, what's the allure then for playing music? What do you, what, all these other things are, are minuses, what's, what's, the, what's the plus? Well, I get to do what I want to, yeah, you know? And, uh, unfortunately, it's in places like that, but I, uh, that comes with the territory. It doesn't right. surprise me, you know? I try to lead by example. When you're on stage, you're invincible. You're invincible. And I try, like I said, you know, I try, I try to lead by example, meaning I try to do things the way, you know, in, in a way that would make other people be impressed with it, whatever it may be. Lifestyle, all those kinds of things. And I'm not involved in those, in, in the things that kill people off. I'm not involved in them, you know. I have no interest in it. I concentrate on what is important, you know. And what is important is me functioning as a songwriting person in a band that has a message that isn't what you would get from whatever the modern day equivalent of Guns N' Roses is. You're not going to get that from me, you know? If that's what you want, there's plenty of people out there that are willing to do that, but you don't have, don't come looking to us for that because you're not going to get it. And what is the message? I guess it would be... Um, it's a secret. It's a secret, yeah. A secret message. The message, the message, you know, it's unspoken. I guess, you know, it's 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 there. It's a, you know, I mean, art, music is art. Art is communication, you know, and we're communicating something whether people understand what it is or not. You know, you have to believe us. If you don't believe us and we don't believe it, nobody's gonna believe it. You know, we have to make it believable. You know? There you go. <laughs> great. Jared's a really good bass player. He picks up stuff really quickly. Um, you know, our stuff, some of it's pretty complicated and he, he can, uh, uh, he, he can, he, he's a easy learn, you know, and, and, um, and he's really good at, uh, at melody for vocals, you know, and even his own bass parts, you know. We don't tell him what to play at all. He comes up with his own stuff and he does a really good job at it. Sometimes we have ideas for things, but sure. It's, but we, I mean, as far as let people you know, build on what music they're doing. being communication and you're playing with other, other people, it's the same thing, you know. And he's, he's, you know, we've had a lot of people that kind of scratch their heads at what we're doing, you know, that don't quite get it, or it takes them a while to get it. But for, with him, it's pretty immediate. You know? Yeah. And how would you describe Coast? It's, uh, uh, Big, dumb, stupid yeah. looking. No, uh, no. Uh, little, little, dumb, stupid looking. Uh, same thing with him, you know. I mean, it, it's really easy to, to play with him. Um, communication is there, it's, you know, it, it, it's really easy to go, I'll do this, you know, or I got this idea, or, or whatever, you know, and he's, he's also a really quick learn. How yeah. Do you just, how do you describe his personality and, and his interactions with Jared and what, 
their friendship is kind of like uh, you know. mm -hmm. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors is their business their big business <laughs> their big business <laughs> yeah and we don't want to know we only want to know about the small business yeah it's like big business is number two and the small business is number one <laughs> no I don't know they seem like they get along really good you know? similar relationship to what we have you know, trust and understanding like right. we said before that's right he doesn't trust him and understand him I mean I um, knew when I when, just when they see, seeing those guys play you know that they'd be able to do what we were doing I knew it yeah you know I we had to come down to, to play to, to kind of try it to see if it would work but I mean you know as soon as we played the first song it's like oh yeah that's gonna work no it's gonna work fine you know, we knew it would anyway I mean yeah. I'd, you can tell with people if yeah. it'll work or not you know and, and just it kind of seemed you know like fate because they'd already planned on moving down to Los Angeles you know they, they were tired of, of Seattle and they stuck it out there a lot longer than we did yeah you certainly know? you know and I, don't, I don't mean to pick on that area it's just a, that's just that's the way that it is everywhere yeah you know I'm happier here you know yeah it's big and weird and, and anonymous you know hey we're running out of tape do you mind if I pop another one and ask you like five more minutes no of questions? Fine. Is that okay? All right. um, so you getting what you want <laughs> yeah you're looking good so, <laughs> no, I'll put the mic. And I thought that was really interesting and fair. Thing it's kind of sad. Well, I, I don't necessarily think so. I mean, there's so many different things to do. There's so many different worlds to be involved in. And I think it's fair to say, yeah. that, you know, if you walk into a bubble where everything is. Just sure. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's hard for. I think it'd be hard for us to relate to just because. Because you don't feel that way. No, I mean, <laughs> if this is music, music, or music or nothing. Yeah. You know? I couldn't see not playing, you know? I play until I can't play anymore. Well, I'd rather play than sit at home in the garage with my parents smoking weed and drinking Crown Royal, I'll tell you yeah, that. Yeah, sure, but I mean, you know, I'm... <laughs> I mean, the, yeah, there's, the there's, other, there's other mm, things to do. There. There's yeah. other things to do, but this is such a big part of, of our life, you know? But We're committed. I yeah. think the important thing is replacing it, too, and I don't think he's done that yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, this, you know, this is always what I wanted to do, was play music. I knew that when I was in about fifth grade, you know. Because of Kiss. Saw Kiss on TV, that was it. This is it. Yeah. For you? Um, well, I never had any ideas that I would make a living playing music until well into the late 80s, you know, before it became obvious that maybe we could make ends meet to some degree playing music, which is a big surprise to me, you know. Big surprise, <laughs> you know, I mean, that didn't ever seem like it was going to be even an option, you know, so, it's nice, it's a bonus, but, you know, I mean, I, we worked really hard on what we were doing, and still do, and I guess it, uh, it's nice to have that work out, and it would be really easy if it wasn't for all the hard work, you know, but, you know, playing music isn't that hard to do compared to, you know, compared to what? Yeah, I always have to say, what compared to what? You know, compared to uh, logging. Compared to logging or being, Absolutely. you know, in a shark tank somewhere. Yeah. I mean, I'll take the music. You know? Commercial fisherman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh? Oyster shark. Some stinking tub up in Alaska. I was trying to think of jobs in in, uh, in in the Washington State area you could have. You know, logger, oyster shucker. Uh, drug dealer. Drug dealer would be a big one. I mean, yeah, you could. You could deal drugs. Definitely, that that's a, probably the biggest. Uh, Biz, biz, business up there. <laughs> Let me ask you something. I, I'm confused about this. You guys are from Montesano or from Aberdeen, and what's the difference? Both. Yeah. Well, Montesano is about ten Smaller miles apart. Smaller town. Yeah. Montesano. In the smaller. area. Can, can you guys? Just, here, let me quiet this off, and then. Um, uh, um, can you guys describe uh, what that um, area is like for me? Um, well, in Growing up in Grace Harbor, which is on the west coast of Washington State, was uh, probably akin to growing up in a rural area anywhere. You know? mm -hmm. There's no... Uh, the, difference, the difference would be somewhere like Olympia, where Carp was from, at least there's an influx of culture to some degree. Where we were from, there's an influx of nothing. Right. There wasn't even a record store, you know, no. whereas in, in Olympia, at least you could find records. I mean, that's where we used to go shop for records. They had punk rock shows in Olympia. Yeah, had, that's where we played our first punk rock shows. Yeah. I saw lots of shows in Olympia. I saw great bands play in Olympia. Yeah. It was great. You know? There was nothing like that in Aberdeen. There was no, no place to play. Oh, God, no. Um, no bands besides ours. I mean, the other bands, like I said, were just cover bands, you know, that, that played the high school dance, and that was about it. And certainly they didn't like what we were doing or, or think no. it was uh, 
uh, anything at all, you know. Um, I'm sure that they thought that, that we weren't good musicians. and. Well, they hated us. Yeah. No, I, I had no friends there. The friends that I had then are the same. I still am friends with those people from there, you know, 30-plus year right. friendships, right. you know. Um, it's a, few, a handful of people, two people, you know. But yeah, really, I mean, there was nothing to do besides drink a bunch of beer, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Uh, what happens when you're around people like that is that you just don't talk to them about anything. There is no relationship. Because right. you, what you right. end up doing is compromising what you're talking about, or you just end up with an argument about them, with them. And I have no interest in that. I have no interest in educating them or trying to get them to see my side of anything. I, have no, I never did then. I don't now, you know. So they can have guys, their lives. You guys were talking about how there was, there's no shows, there's no records, there's no nothing. How did you guys even know about punk rock music at all? I got into it through uh, Cream Magazine, stuff like that, in the 70s, you know. That's it. That's it. And it looked interesting to me. Bands like the Sex Pistols looked interesting in the magazine. So I ordered that stuff <laughs> online. I mean, uh, on mail order. <laughs> oh, you know, uh, Mail order and waited weeks and weeks to get it. And it just went from there. I mean, I started out as a David Bowie fan and, you know, Ted Nugent and all that kind of crap. And it was just a logical extension as you keep going, moving through that. But uh, all those bands, I was into all those bands in the 70s by myself. You know, it, was, it was very strange, very strange time. You know, Then I realized that a lot of these newer punk bands actually played in Seattle, you know? And so then by the time I, but I realized that long before I was able, actually able to get to somewhere like that, you know, because it was a 100, 130, 150 miles, which may as well have been 150 million miles, yeah. you know? My parents weren't in a position to take me or be involved in anything like that with me. They had their own problems, you know? They had their own, their own lives to try to get together and their own worries over just maintaining it super lower middle class living, you know? And they, you know, I, I never expected them to, to be involved in those sorts of things. And they don't fault them for any of that, you know? But then once, once we were able to start going and seeing those things on our own, once we became mobile, when we were, you know, 16, then that was when everything changed, you know? That was when I realized that it wasn't me that was the problem. You know, I just didn't get along with any of these people. I didn't get along with what they were doing. It was. I just didn't have it in me, you know? I can't do it. I can't do it now. I can't do it. I just can't, I just can't be involved in it, you know? I mean, I'd love to go up there and hike around through the woods and things like that, but as far as like having a meaningful relationship or, or any kind of long-term anything with any of those people, I have no interest. And the people that hung around us when we were rehearsing at Dale's parents' house, those people are still there. Still working yeah. shit jobs. Still with the same arrogant attitudes they ever had, you know? I have no interest. None. None at all in any of that. Never did then. Didn't like them. They didn't like me. It's, it's, the feeling is mutual, you know? So, do you, you guys don't like to visit the Northwest anymore? No. I like going up there. It's fine, but I'm not, I don't playing go back shows, there, you know, the good old days. Last time I went to Aberdeen, I was just like, God, this is just worse and worse every time I come here. Yeah. I drove through there with my wife, and she said it was even worse than <coughs> I described it. Yeah, high school burned down. All, you know, any any kind of downtown area that, that used to be in Aberdeen is just gone. It's like a leveled parking lot, you know? They destroyed so, the logging industry. When they destroyed yeah. the logging industry, they destroyed communities like that. And they'll never regain that again, you know? Never, you know? Never, ever. Yeah, it, I mean, now it's like, you know, like Flint, Michigan, you know, if, if you've seen yeah. uh, Roger and Me, you know, it's, it's like looking at it's, that, it's like, oh, it's Aberdeen. You know? They destroyed the... Uh, the auto industry, once yeah. that kind of thing is gone, people start losing everything. They lose hope, you know? Yeah. It, it's always interesting to me that people can have a situation where they view humanity as less than what it really is. Because to me, as human beings, our job is to rise above nature and become more civilized. Not less civilized, more civilized. Not go backwards, go forwards, you know? They seem to want to only go backwards. I have no interest in that. None at all. I think that there's a happy medium there somewhere, you know? So, so what ruins the Northwest for you? I, I, I have a little hard time explaining exactly what you're talking about. Well, I don't know. It's, uh, um, we just like California better. You know? I, mean, I could probably live in pretty, Seattle. Yeah, probably. But, you I know? mean, you know, it's like, but, it's like if you grow up someplace, like, like you, you live in Brooklyn now, you know? You're not going to go to, back to Yakima and live there, right? Then you, I mean, I think I think you understand exactly you know, what it's like. It's, it's like, like returning to the scene of the crime. Yeah, 
you know. I mean, there's nothing there, and and especially career-wise for us, there, there's not, you know, what would we do there? Nothing. There's nothing, nothing to do there. You know? We have nothing to go home to. My parents don't even live down there anymore. I mean, I don't really, I don't have, yeah, same here. My my mom lives in Olympia now, and that's about as close as I get. You know, I I might know a few people that I was friends with in high school that'll come to shows occasionally. You know, there's one guy that actually that, that used to come watch us practice. He was, you know, was a cop in Aberdeen. It's always good hearing stories from him about, you know, like, oh, yeah, I arrested so-and-so, and, and I see this guy yeah. that we went to high school with. Yeah, he's in prison now. You know, uh, the, the few people that I know like that that I talk to, it's always like, what happened to this person? Prison. What happened to this person? Uh, prison for selling heroin. What happened to this person? Dead. You yeah. Know, that kind of thing. You know? So, and believe it or not, I wasn't friends with a lot of people like that. Right. As hard as that might be to believe. So, so how would you guys describe um, that region, just kind of geographically, um, like the Northwest, just to somebody who maybe has no knowledge? I think it's beautiful. Yeah, I love the the nice. big, uh, 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 that long line of volcanoes all the way up there is really yeah. cool. It's good if you I like rain. I have no rain. problem with any of that stuff. If you like yeah. rain, but you know, living there twenty years and growing up there, it's like, and moving down to California, it's like, oh, this is great. I can barbecue every day. Hang out outside. Don't have to wear a coat. You did your time there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You spent half your life in that place. That's Is that, right. Isn't that enough? Well, it's enough. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm done. I'm over it. Over, I was over it when I lived there. I just didn't even realize it, you know? You just, you know, you can't go home. You can't go home. There's nothing there. I mean, you know, now you just go back then. There's just, there's nothing there. It's like you I know. said, my wife said it was way worse than I'd even described it. I could she go, said, I mean, how do you, you get out of here alive? Yeah. That's what she said. You know? I can go to the Walmart any place, you know. <laughs> There's Walmarts all over. I mean, uh, for me, when I lived there and I worked a crap job, what going out of the house amounted to this? I have to be careful because if I'm not careful, somebody is going to beat the shit out of me. That's how it worked. That was normal life, you know. So that means you avoid all kinds of things that are going to get you in trouble, whatever that may be. It's not happy-go-lucky families, you know, around there. It's a bunch of arrogant bastards who wanted to kick my fucking ass. I don't have a lot of good memories of all that kind of stuff, you know? I could have, inside of five minutes, put myself in a situation in any part of that whole community where I would all of a sudden try be talking my way out of getting a tire iron and put it upside my head, you know? That's, re that's reality. And would you say, I can't tell you how many times <laughs> that kind of stuff happened. You're at some gas station with some redneck guy, you know, on the verge of aiming a gun at you for nothing, you know? I mean, I don't go to those, you know, that, that's not a you know, happy, fun time. Oh, it was great. I loved yeah. it, you know. We see enough of that on tour. We're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. We're stopping at some gas station. Some rednecks looking at us. Hey, what? You know, What'd you say? I said, hi. <laughs> I said nothing. I want nothing. I said nothing, and I'm going to leave. You know, I'll leave it at that. Why are they mad at you? Why, where's the anger coming from? I don't know. They're probably mad at everything, yeah. you know. I don't know. You know, no idea. Funny. You're walking. That's just the funny. way it works. Sidewalk around here is for regular walking, not fancy walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember one time we were driving through Idaho, and these kids uh, and said, "You guys are from California." They saw the plates on the rental van. Yeah. Why don't you just go back to California? Good idea. <laughs> Point well taken. You know, as much as I'd like to, would like to vacation there or whatever. You know, go and you know look out in the woods and things like that. That's all great. I just. Avoid. I know how those people work. You know, that's what I grew up around. I'm not. I have no interest in it. I don't have those worries now. I might if I went. You know, down to Crackton or something like that. You I mean you might have to worry about those kinds of things. But you know, they're violent people by and large. Now, now you have to worry about drunken, violent, that. asshole, uh, uh, uneducated. Um, you know, and looking for trouble, pretty much. How, how would you guys describe uh, Olympia in the early '90s? Early '90s? Yeah. Oh, God, I don't know. I can describe it in the early 80s, you know? <laughs> you, know uh, you know, early 90s, you know, the only time we'd really see it is, like, if we had a show there, and usually we didn't. It's mostly in Seattle, but occasionally there was, there was shows, like, at um, the Surf Club, you know? Once we know. left there, when we go back and play shows, it was great. It's always, yeah. It's, it's great. Way better. When we lived there and played shows, nobody came to the shows. 50 people. <laughs> a few yeah. people, yeah. What if we played with out-of-town bands, there'd be people there. When did you guys live in Olympia? Well, we Olympia. lived in the area. Yeah. Olympia's where we actually played our first shows. Yeah. You know? 
there was a you know pretty good punk rock scene there. And I saw lots of great bands there, lots yeah. of really good bands, you know. A little small storefront place that was called the um, uh, uh, Tropicana. Yeah. But I saw shows around there in a bunch of different places. The Wipers. Wipers are one of the best. They were one of the best bands. Playing to nobody in Olympia, you know? Yeah. 50 people, 60 people. They're unbelievable. You don't forget stuff like that, you know? Two feet away from a guy who knew how to play guitar, how to write songs, and how, had an amazing band behind him, you know? That was unbelievable. You know, that... You don't, I don't need to be told twice that, that that kind of stuff is special and amazing, you know. Seen it for yourself, certainly. That was all in Olympia, thankfully, you know. It was great, that aspect of it. Uh, what is your, what's, what's Riot Girl? <laughs> what's Riot Girl? I have yeah. no idea. <laughs> that they were, they were into partying, I think, having big riot parties, you know, keggers. Like I said, you know. It's, the K and K records stood for Kager. And you know, that's where Carp <coughs> played, played, played the Riot Girl parties. <laughs> Carp got popular playing Riot Girl parties? Yeah, they did, yeah, yeah. Why did the Riot Girls think they were okay? I don't know. They See, the something. Riot Girls were about the same as the Rednecks where I grew up. They always felt like you were about to get punched in the mouth for doing yeah. nothing, you know? Yeah. What? I didn't say anything, you know? I didn't, certainly didn't look at you, you know? Yeah, but like I, I always I said know. about Riot Girls, I never understood how. They were going to empower women by dressing like nine-year-olds, you know? <laughs> how does or, that work? Or how you can have a, uh, uh, a female-only show when you have a, a male in your band. <laughs> How's that work? Female-only almost. You play outside, but you can still be in the band. Yeah. Female-only yeah. almost. 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 Right, right, Goyles. Goyles. Yeah. So what's... Uh, we, weren't, we, weren't really, we didn't live there around then, so... <laughs> Yeah, we didn't live there around. We didn't really uh, see any of those bands. I mean, we yeah, not really. In that. I didn't have anything to do with it. We just like some of the people were out. nice. Yeah, I, I mean, never, I never trust musical movements. Right, right, right. You know, it has nothing to do with music. You but know? you know, at least I know you know Toby uh, from Bikini Kill always liked our band. And, yeah, and, you know. she was always nice. Yeah, I mean, I never had any run-ins with those people. No, no, not, no. not the not the Bikini Kill people. You know, I had run-ins with people that were were Riot Girl hangers on. Who are really mouthy and, and obnoxious, you know, that, that were like dressing up like, you know, wearing the suit. Yeah. I had that, I had prob problems with those people. Arrogant, you know. I remember this one girl that I met that when I first met her, she was really nice, kind of gothy. Then she turned into a riot girl and she was an absolute fucking asshole. That was the end of that. <laughs> 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 you know, it's like, what happened to you? You used to be a, you used to be a nice person, you know. Now you feel, I feel like you want to cut my throat because I'm male. Sorry. It's not my fault. Hey, dead, <laughs> dead men don't rape. Dead men don't wait. Dead women don't get raped. <laughs> well, <laughs> some people are into that kind of thing. Yeah. Right now, what me and Dale are into is uh, roofies and Viagra. Yeah, it's the male date rape. Right? Male date yeah. rape. Roofies and Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> so, Think uh, about it. What, what do you guys uh, what do you guys think like the kind of moral of the story is for you guys? I mean, obviously you guys don't know, but from today looking back, the moral. Well, we're glad that that uh, Jared actually started playing bass and was in Carb. You know, we're glad that the Carb happened and uh, made it to where we were interested in in him in general. That's good, you know. Um, but ultimately the. The whole thing is, 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 like you said, you know, it's a double whammy for him. Double tragedy, yeah. one being far worse than the other, but the other, other one basically being a potential um, slow suicide. Yeah, both that he had no, no control over. No part to uh, any of it. Yeah. I'm sure he has his, he of course has his happy memories with, with Scott and all that kind of stuff, but, yeah. but uh, uh, that's got to be an almost impossible thing to deal with. I can't imagine it, you know. What kind of a guy do you think Jared is to, to, to be able to persevere, which he obviously has been, you know, so. Nice, strong individual. Mm -hmm. Survivor. <laughs> Survivor. Survivor. That's right. Yeah. Any other uh, 
Yeah, it's like a series about this hobble thing. What's that? A hobble? Film is playing some hobble. Okay. <sighs> I bat. You bat, I'll pitch. <laughs> Okay for anything? Yeah, absolutely. Good. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm going to show um, the scenes in between the bands. Oh, yeah? On Friday. So who's yeah. playing? I'm doing um, Ahmad Wazif. Oh, yeah. Ahmad Wazif. Uh, yeah. And uh, David Scott Stone. 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 Yep. Oh, yeah. And Bipolar Bear and Old Blood. Bipolar Bear. That's it. Oh, okay. We just toured those guys. Do you have a ball, Dale? Uh, there's a little bag of balls. Oh, here we go. 